static thrust tests don't tell you how the prop is going to perform in the air. We hear it all the time. So let's take a look at how a prop actually performs in the air and in just the simplest way possible that we can using instruments we already have on our quad. Now we're not going to look at punch outs or straight line speed or anything like that. That's a little more complicated, but we can look very easily at how much control authority we have. So what I'm going to compare here is looking at our basically just our gyro trace and seeing how quickly we can accelerate in a spin. Now this is a, a hand driven. It's not a, a I, I don't have a pre-programmed cycle that I'm running to to test. So it's I'm still I'm flying it off the sticks. So our results are going to be a little looser than uh, we can compare on the bench test. But as long as we're very careful and we try and compensate uh, for that looseness, uh, we should still have a very good idea of what's going on. So the idea here is I'm looking at um, just doing a snap roll, or, or in this case, a pitch flip, because we've got a fast, hard acceleration up to a high speed, and then we're going to coast and then come down to a complete stop. And I'm going to look at the recovery from the flip, um, mostly because uh, the initiation of the flipper roll is going to be in the softer portion of your expo. And so you're going to be easing into that. The, the PID controller is going to ease into this move a lot more, and that's going to slow down the initial response. We really want to see how much response we get if we just floor it flat out. And we get that a lot closer with the recovery because we're coming out of the fast portion of the expo. So this initial command is going to kick in a lot faster. Also what I'm going to do is I'm not going to look, in this case I've got a 900 degree a second roll and I'm coming uh, down to rest at zero. I'm not going to count from 900 to zero uh, because we do have some, uh, there is still, is still some smoothing uh, or some uh, some easing in and out that you're going to get because of stick commands and stuff. So we're just going to focus on the fastest portion of the deceleration. So we're going to pick from 700 degrees a second and go down to 300 degrees a second. So we're not catching the slow tail or the, the, the slow initiation of it, just really the, the portion where we are accelerating the quickest, where the motors have been spun up and we're actually seeing the the results of that thrust um, just that little 400 degrees a second in the middle of the spin and we'll compare those values the other thing that we want to make sure is that in these tests what i'm looking for uh, here on the motor charts is that this is a clean kind of step that it's not it's not like uh, a little it's not uh, easing in and, and kind of mountaining up and then mountaining down the pit controller here is slamming that motors these motors full on and then it's holding them full on so this is as fast as it can possibly go the the pit controller is not slowing it down any we can be sure that we're seeing actually the full response of the motors trying to spin up the props as fast as I can over this thing and we're not being slowed down by anything else. So starting with the Exol quad blade, uh, we're hitting our target in 26 milliseconds. The Rotor X is doing it in 21 and the Lumineer also doing it in 21. So for the amount of acceleration we actually have on the Exol quad that gives us around 15,000 degrees a second per second of acceleration and then on the Lumineer and the Rotor X um, about 19,000 degrees a second per second. So that's, I think, a pretty clear difference there between the uh, lower thrust of the Exol. Uh, this one's getting about 10% less thrust on the static stand uh, compared to either the, um, the Rotor X or the Lumineer, which have uh, basically the same thrust performance. And we expect that these measurements are not going to be as controlled as on the static one. So a couple milliseconds here or there, uh, we don't want to read too much into that. But I think uh, from 26 to 21, uh, even if you take a, you know, a couple millisecond fudge factor on that, and given that the other two are performing very similarly, I think we can pretty clearly show that both the Rotor X and the Lumineer just have uh, slightly better 
authority in the air. And that the sort of comparison that we made with the static thrust test is still pretty valid. Uh, on this, the uh, static stand, we saw a difference of about 10% thrust. Uh, in the dynamic test, we're getting about a 20% difference in control authority. So even if you say uh, an, an optimistic, uh, only 5% of that maybe wiggle room, the numbers fit pretty close, uh, all things considered. And the numbers that we see for control authority do seem to match up pretty well with raw thrust numbers because the Rotor X and the Lumineer prop, uh, despite having different efficiencies, both gave the same thrust and we're seeing the same basic authority out of them. Also I think interesting if you compare the motor command um, that happens to get to get that same speed change for each of these props, the Xsol and the Lumineer prop both have kind of similar length like the uh, the motors here get pegged uh, for just about the same length of time. Although of course the Lumineer prop we get more thrust out of that same length of time and so we are able to slow down faster but if we compare it to the rotor x prop which is lighter than either of the other two its motor command section is noticeably shorter and given that we get the same uh roughly the same performance out of that um, what I would guess that we're seeing here is this is the lighter prop because you have to remember this is the, the motor command, not the speed that the motor is spinning. Uh, there is going to be delay from when you tell the motor to start going before it's, it spins up and, and we don't have feedback uh, from the ESC uh, what the actual RPM of the motor is. So what I think we see here is the lighter prop being able to spin up faster and this kind of cutting down the delay from motor command to uh, gyro response here. At the end of the day, the actual uh, like speed change to the performance that we get out of it, uh, like between the Lumineer and the Rotor X, is the same in you know degrees per second per second. Um, but uh, I just thought that that was uh, really interesting that both of these these props are driven the same uh, this kind of amount of time and then where we see a different uh, amount of performance out of them and then where uh, the Rotor X and the Lumineer uh, get driven by a different amount of time and then we get the same performance out of them.